Do you struggle to stay relaxed when you are studying or working? It's a very common problem. We sit down to study or to work on a project and we end up feeling so stressed and anxious that we can't concentrate. My name is Sarah, I am an English teacher and language anxiety coach and in this video I'm going to talk about how you can stay relaxed while you are studying or working so that you get a much better result from the time you spend at your desk. Now really there are three aspects to being able to stay relaxed. There's your mind, your body and also your surroundings and in this video I'm going to talk about all three of those and share tips on how you can um, improve all of them so that you are in a much much better state when you sit down to work. So first of all let's talk about your mind and your mental well-being. Now it simply isn't possible to be effective if you are feeling stressed or anxious or even tired. All of these things can impact your ability to focus and concentrate. Now, I'm going to share three ways that you can keep yourself mentally focused and engaged while you are studying and working. Now, the first of these is really simple and really obvious, and that is that you need to take regular breaks. I am always really amazed at the fact that people think they can just sit down and work in front of their computer for six, seven, eight hours. And I have done workshops online where we were expected to just sit all day in front of the computer for nine hours with no real break. And you know what? I just can't work like this. And to be honest, I don't think anyone can do that and still be effective and efficient. So <clears throat> if you are working at your desk, at the very least, you want to have a 10 minute break every hour of work. So that means that you work for 50 minutes and then you take a break. Now, it's really important when you have your break that you don't stay in front of your computer and just go onto YouTube because that isn't really having a break. When you have a break, you need to stand up get a drink, get some fresh air, do a five minutes of yoga, do some push-ups, anything, but you really need to do something different so that when you go back to your computer, your brain has had a complete break. Now, the second way that you can help yourself to stay mentally focused is by taking micro breaks every 15 to 20 minutes. Now, I do this not all the time that I'm working, but I do it quite a lot. It's become a habit. And um, there are different things you can do for a micro break. I like to take three breaths in and out with my eyes closed. And I try to do this every 15 to 20 minutes when I'm working. Other things you can do are just 10 minutes, or 10 minutes, 10 seconds of stretching. And another thing you could do is just to look out of the window and look at something different for maybe five or 10 seconds. And the idea is just that you refresh your mind every 15 to 20 minutes. And it really helps you to stay motivated and focused. And it also helps you to stay calm because if you're finding you're starting to get a bit stressed, stopping to focus on your breathing um, helps you to de-stress. And 
The final thing that I would recommend, and this is really for people who um, struggle with focus and who tend to get distracted quite easily, and this is a great online tool called Focusmate. F-O-C-U-S-M-A-T-E. Now on Focusmate, you do have to join. It's free um, for three sessions a week. After that, it's $5 a month. But basically, you book your times and then you go and work online with somebody else. So Focusmate puts you in contact with someone else. You work together either for 25 minutes or for 50 minutes. And it really works because it gives you that accountability. You know, if you don't turn up, you kind of feel a bit stupid. I've forgotten sometimes and felt really stupid. So it works because it makes you commit and it forces you to stay focused. So those are my three tips for mental well-being while you study. But what about the body? What about your physical well-being? Now, when I used to teach in language school, bearing in mind that my students were generally younger than me, um, I found it quite shocking that they would, that my students would sort of sit like this, or they would sit like this, or they would drink a liter of Coca-Cola, or go out every 15 minutes for a cigarette and you know these things are not really very good for your body and if they're not good for your body well they're not really good for your mind and your concentration so your body and your mind are connected and you can't really expect your mind to work brilliantly if you're not looking after your physical well-being too so let's look at a couple of ways that you can make sure your body is in a good state to help your mind also be in a good state. First thing, drink lots of water, okay? It has been shown that if you do not have enough liquid in your body, you cannot concentrate. So keeping hydrated, having enough to drink, is really important for your concentration. Now, unfortunately, coffee doesn't count, Coca-Cola doesn't count, and sadly, wine and beer also doesn't count. And um, the only thing you can really drink is water and herbal tea. And I drink water all day. And I try to drink about two liters of water because I know it really helps me to stay focused and um, it's really better just to have a little bit and a little bit rather than a big 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 drink because your body needs this kind of regular intake of fluid to keep it healthy now another thing that's really important and that is sleep sleep is not something that you regularly want to not have enough of Okay, and again, it has been proved that being tired has an impact on your ability to concentrate. And I remember once I had a, a trial lesson with a student in China, and I was like, "What's the time for you?" And she said, "Oh, it's three o'clock in the morning. This is all that. This is when I have to study." And she was so tired. Um, and she couldn't focus, she couldn't concentrate. So you need to be sleeping enough because sleep is a massive, massive influencer on how well you can concentrate, yeah? You could have another coffee and do another hour of work, but what's the cost to doing that? It's not good for your body and often we don't work that well when we've got this combination of tiredness but caffeine um, energy too. And finally, when it comes to physical well-being, exercise. Now, physical exercise might not seem to be connected to language learning. But again, it's all about looking after your body so that you, your mind is in the best place it can be 
for your studies. Now, I'm not suggesting, unless you want to, that you go out and train for a marathon, but even something as simple as five minutes of yoga or a few sit-ups and push-ups can make a big difference to how well you can focus. So finally, let's talk about your surroundings, your environment. Now, I understand that not everyone has got, if anyone, complete control of their environment. I know that there are people who live with the big families, who live in small apartments, who live in noisy cities. I know there are people who don't have a nice desk to work at. But as far as you are able, you need to have, do what you can to make your environment positive for you. My old flatmate, she used to study while she was sitting on her bed and she used to end up kind of like this because sitting on your bed is not comfortable if you do this all day with a laptop on your knee. So ideally you have a desk, you have a table, um, ideally you have good light to see by, ideally you don't have a noisy background, if you do maybe have some earphones and listen to some very quiet music on YouTube. Um, and make sure where you sit is comfortable, okay? You don't want to be sitting like this. This is not helpful for you. So try some of these. See how they impact on your studies. <clears throat> if you have any other ways of looking after your mind and body and environment while you study, I'd love to know. You can leave them in the comments below. My name is Sarah. I am an English teacher and language anxiety coach. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're watching on YouTube, please do subscribe to my channel to keep you up to date with my latest videos. Bye bye.